Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this. This is LK's Wrestling Reviews, and this is your Shine 29 review. And for the first time ever, this will be aired on three different channels. This will be aired on smartcomart.com. Uh, that will be the smartcomart.podbean.com with the Smartcomart Podbean Network under the LK Wrestling Reviews category. This will be aired on cocosports.net YouTube channel, cocosports.net. Make sure you head over there. And it will be aired on LK's YouTube channel and LK's Wrestling Reviews.co.uk. And if you're wondering, like, LK, you're in with all these, you're with every every Tom, Dick, and Harry around here. How can I just find your stuff? If you type into Google www.lk's Wrestling Reviews.co.uk, it, I, I, it's only me. Okay. You don't get anyone else. It's just my stuff stuff there's a news and rumors section there's an article section and there's all my podcasts whether i'm doing it for coco sport whether i'm doing it for smugmuck.com whether i'm doing it for myself that will be there so that's just a cheap plug out of the way but you're here to listen to me talk shine 29 and if you listen to this on coco sports uh, youtube channel make sure you put in the comments was this show a win was this show a tie or was this show a loss in my opinion i'm going to give it a weak win slash strong tie depending on what mood i'm in I literally just got finished watching the show. Uh, if you want to watch this show, make sure you go to www.nlive.com. Uh, it cost uh, $14.99, and I converted it. It was about £10 uh, to watch it live. Or, you know, there's obviously some a pirate's way to watch this show. I'm not going to say how I watched it. No, I watched it at wnlive.com. I'm a big user of uh, wnlive.com ever since. Because basically my story of WN Live is that in December, I ordered an Evolve show and it didn't work. But since then, I've upgraded my internet. I'm now on Sky Fiber Optic, which is pretty much the best broadband there is in, in my area of the country. So now I got really good streaming service. So now I'm, I'm looking into sh I'm looking into Shine. This is my very first Shine show. Okay, so if you're expecting top notch analysis, this is not the place. This is me just getting to know these women. And I'll I tell you what, it was very odd. I'm going to be honest, I'm going to call a spade a spade straight up front. This is the very first show I've watched that's exclusively for women. Uh, not not for women to watch, you, you, know, you know, I mean, it's just for women. Women are the only people we wrestle on this show. And it's very strange. Like, I'm expecting, okay, it, 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 I, I try not to be disrespectful here. I, I'm really not, because, bro, the last thing I want to do is disrespect the, the female gender, because I have nothing wrong. But it's just, it was kind of, it was kind of strange. Like, it'd be just like watching a show with just men. You're like, oh, where's the women? Okay, okay, we'll move on. But it was really weird. I was like, okay, next. And I'm just expecting men to come out. And in all due respect, because let's, let's call it a spade a spade again. 90% of wrestling matches are men. 10% are female. When you're watching a show that's 0% male and 100% female, it kind of takes you off a bit. And it, it, watching two and a half hours, hours of hot women wrestling around and barely clothed it's kind of like okay bro and, and i'm gonna tell you right before i got uh, i think it was the i've got it written down here when i get onto it uh, sherry bomb versus taylor made and and bro it was it was it, it, it's just like you're sat there and if you've watched me on the uh, cookersports.net the war room and all that you'll, you'll know that the, the format of my room where the door is uh facing me uh so for instance i have my desk i have my laptop on my desk i have my computer chair and then behind me is the door. So if someone walks in and I've got my headphones watching Shine 29 with my hands, just, you know, it's just hands down. And then all of a sudden, you say, for instance, my parents walk in because because they're the door. I can't hear because I got the. I, I always have my audio up loud whenever I watch wrestling shows. I love getting the atmosphere. And this show was from Florida. If you're taking notes for some reason, I, lo I loved when JR said that. If you're taking score at home. And just imagine, like, just your mum or your dad walk in and, and you're there with, like, just watching women's wrestling only with pink canvas. They're going to think, whoa, 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 hold the fort, LK, brother. Hold the fort. Have you ever heard of a thing called porn, bro? Like, I'll just be like, oh, my God, what the fuck's going on? Thankfully, none of this happened. It would just be the most awkward experience of my life. But that's just, you know, uh, until I said, look, I'm watching Shine for the uh, podcast, but it could be a very awkward situation if just so be warned if you're a male listening to this and you are watching shine and you're watching any kind of women's wrestling be warned if you still live it with your parents be warned make sure you keep your laptop away from the door because they will be thinking you're up to dodgy business and when i say dodgy business you know what i mean let's get to it i mean i've already been flabbergasting around for five minutes i want to get this one done out of the way uh, for some particular reason, I just want to get it done. I've uh, I just it's on my mind. I thought I want to do a podcast today. I'm going to be doing a raw review for smartcomup.com after this. If you're interested in that, and you know, one thing also about this show, the rings a not a standard 18 by 18, or if you if you're a W fan only, they use a 20 by 20 square foot ring. 
This was a 16 by 16 foot ring. I like that a lot because obviously the women, are, in all due respect, again, they are a lot smaller than the men, so they don't need the big enough ring. And then it gives more room for the crowd. So I was happy with the 16 by 16 foot ring. It was from the Ephidopia in Florida. I'm really bad at, at, at countries and places, and America is such a big damn country. Opening match of Crazy Mary Dobson versus Miss, Miss Rachel. Again, my first time ever seeing these two. You know, Mary has this kind of nutcase gimmick. She's a baby face because of it. I don't know if she's a baby face or if they're just cheering her because she's so damn good. I don't know. I mean, uh, one thing I love about women's wrestling is they have that cutoff point where they always pull the hair down and they bump. It always looks incredible because the hair is so long and they make that screeching noise. And it kind of gets you feel that, oh, the sympathy, the sympathy vote for the baby face. That's one thing I do uh, like and appreciate at women's wrestling. Match is OK. I mean, uh, the Mary gets the one with a split legged moonsault. I mean, the story was, you know, power, which is Miss Rachel versus speed, which is crazy Mary. And I enjoyed it. It was uh, it was about five to ten minutes. Made that makes that eight to ten minutes. It was quite long. It wasn't, you know, too quick. It just it set the tone of the evening. I'm gonna give it a star and a quarter. Wasn't the best match. But if right, here we go. If you up to picture a standard women's match on Raw, this is what it would be. You know, just a standard. You know, before we got this so-called divas revolution, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. There was, you know, the typical eight to ten minute match on Raw, and this is what it was. Uh, then we move on to sh uh, next match: Cherry Bomb versus Taylor Mead. Uh, Cherry Bomb is one half of the Shine Tag Team Championship. Obviously, a non-title match because not involved in tag team match. Duh. Uh, and then again, again, I want to make this per. I'm what. Uh, it's so dodgy. I I, I want to say it again because I'm watching it. I've got my notes here, and uh, that this is the time when I writ it because Taylor Mead wore these or Taylor Made. Sorry, Taylor Made. I do apologize. Taylor Made was wearing these trucks trunks that basically her outfit was um she wore uh, like like a bra and basically uh some like shorts but the shorts went right up her ass they must have been pretty painful for her to be perfectly honest she looked smoking hot but i'm not going to deny that but the issue is because of that and, and you know the camera you can't help it with the camera view it's like for instance whenever she bent over to pick her up the camera is always on that shot and i heard a knock on the door uh for, i think i think i think it was my brother and I'm thinking, oh shit on it. She's going to think I'm up to dodgy business. So I quickly pause it, get another tab up. I'm like, yeah, what's going on? What's going on? He's like, what, what, why have you got a blank tab up? No, no reason. No reason. It's just like, yeah, what do you want? I'm like, yeah, what do you want for, what do you want for dinner? I'm like, oh, thank fuck. Thank God. I got away with that. It's big time, big time. Damn it to God. Like the, the cat, I have no issue with them. I have no issue with them wearing barely any clothing. But it's when the camera view gets the certain point and, and then my brother walked in, I was like, oh, my good Lord almighty. I, I had my hands in my I had my hand on my heart thinking, Jesus, my heart can't race any further. I, I've never been caught doing the dodgy business and them thinking I'm doing the dodgy business when I'm just watching and reviewing a wrestling show. Oh, bro. Good. Good times. Sorry about that. If that made a really bad noise, I hit the chair against the desk. Uh, again, uh, Cherry's tag team partner is Kimberly, but Kimberly at this night wasn't there. She was at Chikara, if I'm correct. Uh, put in the comments section below on any of the pod on any of the sites that you're watching this. Uh, what freaking show she was at? From my notes, from my standpoint, I've got Chikara, and and the story for this, you know, it, it made um, basically the story for this is. You know, you want Taylor May to get the win so she'll get a future tag team championship match. That's the story that they're trying to portray. That's the story the commentators are doing a great job out of putting over, saying, look, if Taylor May gets a win here, her and who, who's her partner? What's your bronze her partner? Let me do so. See, look, this is where, like I said, this is going to be a bona fide clusterfuck. That's what's going to be because I'm new to this. I'm not, not new to podcasts, obviously, doing it nearly a year now. I'm new to this uh, Shine Wrestling. So imagine watching your first ever show, then having to review and break it down. So here we go. So we have, uh, well, 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 I think it was Kay Lee and April Hunter. That's that's the jabron. April Hunter is Taylor Maid's tag team partner. So obviously, uh, obviously, uh, Taylor Maid looking to get the win. Uh, you know, it uh, doesn't, Jesus Christ, he'll heat a uh, bomb with uh, some vicious slaps. A bomb of a suplex into the buckle. They exchange some big elbows until bomb hits a running Death Valley driver for two because Hunter pulled the ref out. Made them rolls her up to get the win. I was expecting, and now I'm expecting, sorry, Maiden Hunter versus Kimberly and uh, Made for the uh, tag straps at Shine 30. Again, this is so fucking hard. I'm gonna I'm gonna call a spade a spade again. This is really difficult. 
this is difficult reviewing a show where you don't know the t- out of the six women I knew Sherry Bond. That's it so far from what I've seen. And, and it's, it's really difficult because you don't want to you know, say anything bad about them because they could be good workers. You know, this is an OK match. It really was. But, you know, it's just it's a star in three quarters. It didn't drag. I didn't get bored. But at the same time, I won't remember it past tomorrow. So if you're looking at it from that standpoint, a storyline continuation now, because obviously they're going to go that way, whether it being Shine 30 or Shine 31, I don't know yet. Hasn't been made official since then. But there probably will be a tag strap match at that show. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now we move on to Andrea and Jane Jameson versus Leva Bates and Mia Yim. Uh, they are the Lucha sisters. Obviously, uh, Leva Bates is Blue Pants from NXT. And Mia Yim is Jade from TNA Wrestling. Uh, and SoCal Val is the manager of James, James, Jane Jameson and Andrea. Again, I'm a big fan of SoCal Val, as I, as I put over quite a lot on my Evolve 47 and the Evolve 48. I think she could, could be a great manager. Uh, bring her to bring her down to NXT in Florida. She's already down there for the Phil, Phil Impact Pro Wrestling shows. So maybe have her go down there, have her work with the guys who don't speak fluent English. Then maybe that way you can hire some more foreign talent. And when I say foreign, I mean the Japanese. You know, the Japanese wrestling market right now is booming. And especially now that the Japanese guys are coming over to, to England, they're coming over to America a lot. They're now getting f- familiarized with these talents. So now when they sign, people go, oh, I know him. He's blah, blah, blah from New Japan Pro Wrestling or Pro Wrestling Noah Dragon Gate. You, you get what I'm, you know what I'm saying? So have Sokovar come down. Have him manage Hideo Tommy. Have her manage uh, fucking who else we got? You got Hideo Tommy. You got uh, Kana now. You can, you know, you could do those two. You maybe have Kana go for the NXT women's title. Hideo go for the NXT championship. All as heels. So Carvalho is a heel magnet. Generally, she's one of the best heels I've seen in a very long time. She's a great valet, a great manager, whatever the fuck you want to call her. I think she does a great job. And I'm happy to see her on the show. Uh, it was kind of weird seeing Lever Bates as Lever Bates and Mia Yim as Mia Yim. It really was strange. But, uh, but Powell versus Speed, obviously, because Andre and James Jameson. That's a that's that's not a nice one to say, is it, James Jameson? That's cruel. Commentators, I give you credit for getting that right all the time. Powell, obviously, Andre and James Jameson. Speed, obviously, Lever Bates, Mia Yim. Uh, Yim hits a nasty soccer kick. Uh, Yim um, showing uh, Char- Charlotte how to do uh, chops correctly. I thought that was very amusing. Uh, face in peril is obviously uh, Lever Bates. Uh, sorry, uh, Mia Yim. Sorry, uh, Bates gets the hot tag. Bates hits a bridge Northern Light suplex for two. Uh, Andrea and James then hit. Uh, really, they do a really good job in cutting the ring in half, and then they they keep getting the ref being distracted all the time, constantly. You know, there was some false tags in there. There was referee distraction. That's how tag team wrestling is done. When tag team wrestling is done correctly, it's beautiful to watch because you have the, the face in peril. You have the ring cut in half. It's, it's so simple. And little tricks, like the, only the veterans like Lever Bates and me again will be able to do this. Like, for instance, the false tags and, and the referee, like, come in, I want to help my partner, but the ref pushing you back behind their back. The heels are getting their dodgy business in. And I need to stop saying dodgy business. You're going to be wondering what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, the hills, you know, get some heel heat on and then get the crowd more interactive. But the, 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 there is an art to it. Obviously, you don't want to get the heel heat on the ref. I think Austin and Edge and Christian talked about that on the podcast on the network. Uh, I only caught half of that because after Raw, fin- Raw finished my time for uh, like 10 minutes past 4 a.m. in the morning, I then had the network on the background as I went to sleep. That, that's pretty much how it, how it was, and I only caught about half of it. I need to finish. I need to finish watching the end of that, and I'll definitely give that a watch and update my blog on lkrestmovies.co.uk and what I thought of it. Uh, Yim hit a German suplex, uh, and then Andrea hit a nasty power bomb, dumping Yim right in the head, and then Yim hits a package pile driver to get the win. I like I said, I like the tag team formula that this match produced: standard babyface and peril, hot tag, clearing house. Spot, 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 finish. That's how tag team wrestling should be. I'm going to give this two stars. Best match of the night so far. It's not the best match of the night overall, but it was so far. And then we'll move on to one of my personal favorite matches. It, it, it really didn't go long, but I loved it. We had, uh, oh, dude, I'm going to fucking slaughter this name. Slaughter. I mean, put the pig there and shoot it already. I'm going to fucking massacre this name. Are you ready for this? Lucius? Lucius? Ah, uh, fuck. Lucios, one of them, Latasha. We're going to stick with Latasha. That's what name she's going to be called. Latasha versus Sue Young in a very fast-paced match. You know, Young starts off 
with a huge running shotgun knee to the head. Uh, Yarm really aggressive, and uh, she then hits a filthy neck break, really stopping her just straight in the head. Beautiful. Uh, Latasha then hits a running cross body with Young hun hung up on the ropes. That was beautiful. Uh, Young with a blue thunder bomb. Again, starting off non-stop. There really is until Young gets the hill heat. But again, it's slowing the pace down when needing to because obviously they need a break, rest hold, and then boom, they're straight back back at it. Latasha with a spike DDT. Uh, Latasha missed a frog splash off the top. Young then hits an aeroplane spin into a Michinoku driver to get the win. And I, I love the pacing of this. I mean, it only got six minutes, but they made the most of every single second that they got. I, they really did. And, and then after the match, Young... Uh, did the red mist and does the manable claw with, with uh, this dodgy glove on and she's I'm a huge fan of this young girl She looks great and when I mean that I'm not saying she looks hot Well, she does look hot, but also she she has a great look like she's got this weird face paint on she looks like a fucking psychopath Honestly, she does, and she's got really, really top-notch mannerisms. I think NXT would be wise to pick her up I honestly do feel still be wise. I'm going to give this three stars. They got six minutes. They went out. They really did bust their ass. And, and they put a lot of effort in there. They, they knew they didn't have long. They knew the storyline going into this, which was let's get Sue Young over. They did that in the process. They didn't make Latasha look weak. I fully recommend you watching that match if you have a spare six minutes. And then we move on to our next match. As we have Lufista versus, sorry, again, Lufisto. Sorry. Again, like I said, after a few of these shows, I'll get really regular with the names and I'll start, you know, breaking it down a lot more easier and a lot more quickly and a lot more fluently. But come on, give a brother a break. Just imagine turning into your first ever WWE show and then having to review that. Come on, bro. Again, Havoc is for Havoc from TNA. Uh, basically, the commentator is saying this match could headline any other women's promotion in the world. That gets me hyped. That gets me thinking, okay, this is a big deal. Gives it the proverbial big fight feel. Uh, they start off some nice technical work, which is obviously nice to see. I'm English. I love that. Much slower pacing compared to the previous match of uh, uh, Latasha and Sue Young. Uh, uh, the, the, again, I, I'm a fan of that because they're more aggressive. And, and, and I think uh, Havoc is much better here than what she was in TNA this the past year. Uh, they brawl for the crowd. Uh, the fish hits a running cannonball off the apron. Uh, uh, Havoc then hits an electric chair into the apron. Uh, Lufisto uh, with a nasty soccer kick, STO into the buckle, and a running cannonball into the corner. Uh, the crowd really are starting to get into this. Uh, Havoc with a choke sound for two good near four. I thought that was it personally. That gets this is awesome, Charlie. Havoc hits a beautiful air raid crash to get the win. That's the white noise for UW fans of Sheamus. Uh, both women exhausted after the match. Actually, they could they were just like, oh fuck me. They were just lying there knackered. Very good physical match. I was expecting it to be a brutal, I was expecting it to be very, very slow, a methodical pace. It wasn't. It was it was it was fairly quick. They picked up the pace up when they needed to. They slowed it down when needed to. They did a very good job. I'm gonna give this three stars. I really did enjoy this. So two matches in a trot now of very good women's wrestling. Okay, so anyone who says a Divas Revolution, fuck off. This is women's wrestling. That was very good. Three stars. I'm a stingy bastard with the star ratings, and everyone who listens to me know that. So a three stars from me, that's a fucking compliment. Good job, Havoc. Good job, Lefisto. First time ever seeing Lefisto, I'm, pr I'm, pr I'm becoming a fan. Oh, Jesus. I, I, put, I just put this over. I'm now going to have to bury the company. As we have Brandy Wine versus Leah Von Dutch. Now, again, I don't want to bury it because they're, they're, they're just beautiful women. I can't, they're just two beautiful women who have no right to be in a ring. I'm going to fucking shoot here. I think that these women need to go to a training center. Honestly, it, it, it looked amateur. It looks it looked like I was watching Eva Marie versus Dana Brooke. That, that, that's the level of badness. I mean, the, the, the timing was all off. Uh, Leia hit a botched exploder. She, uh, she had a botched neck break, which could have been severely that could have been severely damaging to both's health. You know, the timing was completely off. And again, I don't mean to be horrible. These are two beautiful women, and they really are beautiful women. They just, it was sloppy. It was sloppy. The crowd didn't care. I didn't care. Uh, LVD hit an awful back, an awful backcracker, and I don't want her to ever watch that again. It was nasty. And she then applies the camel cutch and vine, uh, wine taps. I, I don't ever want to watch that again. It was bad. That was the worst match of the show. Uh, I guess not every show could be perfect. Maybe these two women are trainees. You know, maybe they are trainees. They just, you know, they just want some experience on on an eye pay per view, and they got some experience. Like they can learn from that. But again, did pay for it. 
did think this was shit. Honestly, damn. And then we have Ivelisse and Amanda Rodriguez versus Thunder Kitty and oh god, grief, Malaya Hosaka. So again, getting the hang of this. Um, and I, I'm going to be honest. I think uh, uh, Rodriguez is kind of new to uh, professional wrestling. I think she's just speaking of uh, going to training and wrestling school. I think she's just come out of one. I think she's Ivelisse's protege. Uh, that she doesn't have a page on CageMatch.net, which is a very trustworthy source of mine. If and now cage match it out that's that's what i have an opinion on uh, if you don't know what cage match.net is it's basically uh, it is a wikipedia of not a wikipedia it's a inventory of every single wrestling match that's ever taken place an inventory of every wrestling company that exists if you have a local promotion they have every wrestler from that on the website however there was not an amanda rodriguez the only profile when looking at the Shine 29 card on Cage Match, because I used that because I didn't know who the freaking names were of these people. It, you know, it, it just, I thought maybe she's new. Uh, Rodriguez in that way, obviously, a baby face apparel. Uh, Hosuka, I think that's the name, hit a springboard cross body. And basically, uh, Rodriguez doesn't catch her. She doesn't move to try and catch either. So uh, basically, Husaka just lands on Rodriguez's legs. It looks nasty, it looks painful for both women. Evilly sorts this out with a hot tag. Uh, Thunder then hits an Iron Claw, uh, Thritz Von Eric style. There's a shout out. Uh, Evelise then hits a Guillotine into a DDT to get the win. This was an okay match. Felt draggy as fuck. Honestly, I was sat there looking at the time, thinking, "What the fuck is going on here? I'm fucking bored." Uh, that that was during the Hill Heat stint. Thunder Kitty didn't really do nothing for me. Uh, Hosaka, when she did have a chance to shine, she couldn't really because Rod Rodriguez just looked so green. She was she's the only woman in this whole show who wasn't wearing wrestling gear. She's basically wearing AJ Lee attire. Eva Lee is just fucking incredible. I'm going to give it a star and a half. It was much better than the match before. It's just it felt a bit too long. Maybe cut two, three minutes from this and you got yourself a decent match. And, th and then we'll move on to our, our next two matches, our two last matches of this show. And I was expecting this to be a 10-minute video. We've already been waffling on for, for over 20 minutes now. Uh, so we have Athena versus Vanessa Craven. Now, picture this in your mind. You've got Athena who's Naomi from WWE, not actual Naomi you toilet from WWE, but, you know, they have the same look and same attire. And you have Craven, who looks like Tamina Snooker, same look, same attire, apart from she can work. So the match starts off with three Tope Suicidas from Athena. Yes, I said three. Yes, I said from a woman. Yes, women can high fly. Uh, again, speed versus power, always a recipe for greatness. Uh, Craven hits, uh, literally, I'm just going to go through spots, because there were some great spots in this. Craven hit a beautiful big boss man slam. Athena then throws up, all the way across the ring with by her hair. That was beautiful. Ath Athena then, uh, sorry, that was what, uh, yep, that was what Craven did. Sorry, that's what Craven did. Athena then with the victory roll into the buckle. Uh, Athena then with a vicious curb stomp, really was nasty. Athena with a modified octopus. Uh, Craven with a beautiful sit out spine buster that way to get the win. Very good stuff. Loved the contrast of styles. It really was good because, for instance, w during the first two Tope Suicidas, she kind of bounced off her, but then the third one, uh, Craven bumped. And it looked really good. Complete underdog storyline. And then after the match, Havoc comes out. She basically says, look, we've met before. You beat me once. Let's have a rematch. Athena, the Healy bastard, said, look, fuck off. I have nothing to prove. I've already beaten you, you jabroni. I don't want to wrestle again. And, and, and apparently the commentators are putting it over saying, look, the match they had at the previous Shine event was match of the night candidate. That made me interested. That made me want to see Athena versus Havoc. I was impressed with Havoc's match. That got three stars. I'm impressed with this. This got three stars as well. Very good outing from both both women here. I'm a fan of Athena coming out of this. Never seen her before. I'm a fan of Craven heading out of this. And I, I think Craven versus Havoc could be a very good match. Both physical women, but both, you know, not not slow. You can be physical and slow, like big slow, but these are they they do pick up the pace when needed. And I was a fan of this match. And then we move on to our main events. You have the Shine Championship on the line. As you have Santana, the champion defending against. Alison Cray. Uh, the story for this one is Kay has been waiting three years for the Shy Championship match. She was on the first ever Shine show three years ago. And this is her saying after all this time, she's finally got a first championship match. Will she win the big one in her first attempt? And both, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to call it a spade a spade. Both these women are freaking smoking hot. <laughs> Honestly, jeez, damn. 
Anyway, gee, yeah, these two are definitely out of everyone on this show. If if you if if you're if you're if you're looking to uh, do dodgy business, this will be the match to do dodgy business over. And I will confirm, hand on heart, hand on this English heart. I swear on my life, I did not do any dodgy business over any of this shows. Fact. Damn, I don't. No, no, that's just it's really bad, you know. Talking about doing dodgy business when talking about a rest, women's wrestling promotion, it's almost guaranteed. Like, for instance, if I was a woman and I was talking about uh, WWE, I'd probably talk about doing dodgy business. So it's just a, from a guy, you know, I'm freaking 19. Of course I'm going to be freaking like this. Damn to God. Uh, sorry, you mature gentlemen. The uh, uh, match starts off with Kay. She's got some great strikes on her. She really has got nice strikes. Uh, Kay also does a high-angled lion tame, which looked good. Uh, Santana then on the comeback. She's got nice strikes of her own. Uh, Santana is a fisherman suplex and a crossbody off the top for two. Uh, Kay goes for the discus lariat. Santana ducks, and that means the referee bumped. Uh, Santana then hits a super kick. Another ref runs out. That only gets a two good near fall. Kaylee then rolls her up for two good near fall. And uh, Kaylee, sorry, that's Kaylee was from the person who was the tag match. See, again, this is... Damn, I wish I, I I know I know these people now. K Allison K, that's her name, Allison K. Come on, you fucking toilet LK. Damn, damn it to God. Uh, K then hits a oh, fuck sake, fuck this shit. See that this is this is the dodgy business again. Stop saying dodgy business for crying out loud. This is a bona fide clusterfuck. This is a waffle fest. But more importantly, this is a slaughtering. This is my first time watching Shine Wrestling, and I'm slaughtering the fuck out of it. I sincerely apologize to any Shine Wrestling fan who's watched any 29 of their shows. I do apologize, but again, imagine you have got to break down and analyze a show. If I don't break this down, I'm just going to hold it off and hold it off, and then I'll never watch Shine. That's not the way I want to be. I want to watch every single wrestling promotion out there. So... Allison K roll up for two great near fall. Honestly, thought they had it. Then Santana, it's a bridged victory roll to get the win. I really did enjoy that. There was a real big fight feel to it. They brawled during the crowd a lot. Felt like an attitude era main event. It really did. And it, I enjoyed it a lot. I'm going to give it three stars. And if you're looking at this show from an overall standpoint, you had a three star match main event. You had a three star match between Athena and Craven. You had a three star between the Feast of Havoc. And you had a and, a, and you had a two and three quarter star between Natasha and Sue Young. So overall, you did have some very four very good women's matches out of a nine match card. Includes to half of the. I mean, you can't, it's, I'm going to call it half. Half of the card was very entertaining, very good, very good wrestling. Like there is good women's wrestling out there. There's no match that would blow me away. That's in. Look, I have to watch this match again. But if if someone said, look, you've got to watch those four matches again, I'd be like, okay, cool. That's, that's no problem. I'll watch them happily. Like, very good stuff. Again, if you want to buy it, go to www.nlive.com to purchase the event. It, it, was it as good as the Evolve shows? Fuck off. When it comes to WN, there's no shows, in my opinion, that are anywhere near as good as Evolve, because I'm just a huge Evolve mark, and I love the style that they bring. But as, as a first impression, as my first time watching Shine, I was very impressed with these ladies. I think they all did a good job. Uh, maybe, you know, again, this will probably be weird coming from a 19-year-old guy. I personally feel that they should wear more clothing, like wear wrestling trousers. You know, that's just my opinion. They're, they're basically all wearing, uh, you know, like tight shorts and bras that barely cover anything. It's going to be weird coming from a guy, but when I'm trying to focus on wrestling and then there's a camera shot of, an, of, of, of say, Santana's hot ass, I'll be, I'll be like, oh, come on. It's just like it takes your mind off the wrestling and onto other things, dodgy business things, if you know what I mean. Hashtag dodgy business. That, that, that's cool. Let's call that. that. That could be the, in the title for, for one of the podcasts. Hashtag dodgy business. Jesus Christ. Thank you for sticking around for this. Damn. Again, I do apologize. This was my very first Shine show for Shine 30. Now knowing what these women look like, I think it'll be easier to take notes. But when I'm literally scrounging off cagematch.net to try and find anything out about these women and what they look like, comparison, I had to look up photos. It was a bona fide clusterfuck. But now I've watched one show, it'll be easier to watch the next and the next and the next. And then by, say, a Shine 35, I'll probably know them all at the back of my hand. That being said, this has been LK from the Smart Mark Coco and Coco Sports Team. Make sure you check out LK's Wrestling Reviews.co.uk. Make sure you check out smartcomark.com. Make sure you check out cocosports.net. That being said, this has been LK. A pleasure chatting with you for over half an hour. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch your asses down the line.